to the Night Report podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie Schneiderite. Uh, we got a few things to talk about today. Uh, both, both coordinators and Greg Schiano had extensions announced yesterday. Uh, Greg Schiano had a presser today to talk about the bowl and also hit on some portal stuff. And we're going to talk transfer portal because we got some fairly big news um, Ooh, that big we news. are excited to dive right into. Uh, but first, Greg Schiano. Joe Harrisiniak, the defense coordinator, and Kirk Saraka, the offense coordinator, all had extensions announced yesterday. Greg Schiano's extension will run through 2030. Uh, Kirk Saraka's will run through 2027, and Joe Harrisiniak's will also run through 2027. Uh, talk about just how big of a deal it is getting all three of these contract extensions done, uh, both for the recruiting aspect of things and for the stability of the program. Uh, yeah, I think Shiano's just to start with, um, as the head coach, you need your contract to be extended past the uh, current recruiting class that you're recruiting because you want to tell them that you're going to be here and prove that you're going to be here. Um, so Rutgers has made that commitment to him. He was also dead last in the Big Ten in terms of salary previously at $4 million a year. Now he's going to go up to $6.5 million, I think it was, or six point two five. Uh, I think I think yeah, six point two five. I think it was to start. And I think eventually, uh, I forget the exact number, I think he caps out at over seven. And on top of that, if you read his contract, there's no salary pool whatsoever. Like there was a dedicated amount in his previous contract in 2019 for, for a salary pool. I know Chris Ash had a salary pool on his contract. There's no designated amount for a salary pool. So this man's going to be able to have the full backing, full investment from Rutgers University to build this program back up and build it back to where it was previously under his regime. But huge for him. Um, also, it's uh, seven years from this season. So if you do the math, he'll be 64, which is essentially guaranteeing that he's pretty much the coach for life until he's done. And Greg, uh, Pat Hobbs said that to us too, so it's not too surprising. That's something he alluded to in his presser today. I think he said something along the lines of like, if I hadn't made a boneheaded mistake and left the mm -hmm. first time, I'd you know we'd be in a much different situation, much better situation. Um, but you know he's thankful to have this second opportunity, and he, you know this is the last stop for me. And yeah. So. He's not going anywhere. I don't think really any job could pull him from this at this point. I think this is like kind of a legacy thing for him to, mm -hmm. to get this, to get Rutgers to where he envisions them to go. Yeah. Um, but real quick, that being said, there's some fucking weirdos out there that are like, are you kidding me? You just extended a 500 coach. And it's like, dude, no one else in history has even gotten them to 500. So that's a accomplishment in its own right. <laughs> I know it's, it's insane. Like, Shiano seems to be the only coach that Rutgers could attain that has any chance of uh, of making Rutgers better than ex expectations nationally. So yeah. uh, I'm 100% behind Shiano. I think he's the right guy, and I think he has learned a lot um, from his first tenure and even from his first couple of years at Rutgers the second mm -hmm. time around. So uh, I think he's more flexible than he used to be. Yeah, um, a lot of bozos out there. I, I do have like kind of a caveat to the the whole – assistant pool thing it seems like that's just the floor and i agree that it's not really as harped on as much because in the sec in the big 10 now you have so much more money and so money is mm -hmm. kind of no object yeah um like we're already we, we had to pay sean gleason this year a million dollars and we got <laughs> we got kirk soraka for 1.4 this year so i think the the was pool stuff <laughs> was kind of out the window for a while you know harris yeah. making over a million um, and then you have a, a bunch of assistants who are making a good amount too, and Flaherty and Brock. Like, if you look at all the contracts of the guys that they got this off season, uh, it's a, it's a lot of money, and it's definitely more than the Shiano assistant pool that he had in his original contract. And then now that's not there anymore, so it's kind of yeah. whatever we can get. Um, well, let's kind of pivot to the, the the presser. So he kind of touched on some of the things we already talked about in his presser. Uh, what were some other things that he talked about today? in his presser uh, in preparation for the bowl? I'd say, hold on, preparation for bowl. Let's, let's start there instead. Um, I thought it was interesting. He didn't really comment if Max was, he said Max, is, Max Melton's going to make his own decision on if he's going to play in the bowl game or not. I think we all just kind of assumed when he declared for the draft, that was it, like he's done. The fact that he's saying it like that gives me a little bit of hope that he might be able to play. And if you have your top corner out there, I mean, that, that's huge in, in its own right. Uh, especially given a team that doesn't have quarterback one, doesn't have quarterback two, and is down to quarterback three in Miami. So um, I think that's huge. I found it interesting, too, that he well, – uh, one, more, one more caveat on Max Melton. 
he said that Max has been playing this year with a broken hand. Yeah, that's and what so, I was going to bring up. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. <laughs> you're fine. Uh, yeah, he played. He started the season with a broken hand, and I did question it a little bit because it's like if if your top corner's got a broken hand, maybe I don't know, play, play the backup, let the guy heal. But <laughs> um, it, he did bring up a good point. It, it's in, for as aggressive as Max is, he has that type of cornerback style, like a like a Bland or like a Travion Diggs, who's just super aggressive, and he's either going to get the mm-hmm. pick or he's going to get a touchdown, giving up on him. Mm-hmm. Um, and he can't do those like those type of things. You can't press at the line as a corner with with one hand, especially if the other one's broken. Like obviously, um, so yeah, it definitely hurts him in terms of technique and stuff like that. And his aggressiveness was a little bit gone. But then all of a sudden, in midseason, when he started to heal more and more, you kind of started to see the the real Max Mountain stood up, I guess. Um, yep. So yeah, I thought that was uh, probably the most notable thing from the presser. Yeah, uh, there was a few questions. Um from different people regarding uh i thought you had a good question it was basically how do you balance both Mm -hmm. preparing for a bowl evaluating in the transfer portal having people visit and wrapping up your high school recruiting class which signing day is less than a week away um just trying to balance that and i thought he gave a pretty good answer what what did he say Mm -hmm. when you asked him that well, I mean, for starters, I thought it was interesting because he's never had to do all this before because the yeah. transfer portal's never been this crazy. He's never had his last bowl game was in 2019, and they had what a week, and yeah. it was past. Yeah. I think it was already past signing day actually at that point. Yep. Um. So yeah, that that was just craziness in its own right, and then this is just a complete shit show. Like you see him traveling, he's going to Florida for in homes, he's doing this at an in home. Then you got to recruit the transfer portal guy that they hosted on Monday. And then you got to go re- recruit who's coming this weekend and go do this and go do that. He kind of mentioned that he loves it, which, which I mean, based on the guy, based on the guy's work ethic, it's not too shocking. And based on the hours, if he was, if you were billing him hourly, I, you're getting a hell of a lot more than 6.25 <laughs> million. Like the yeah. dude is just on the grind nonstop and, and you got to love that from him and love that attitude too. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was interesting to see just kind of take me through Greg's weekly uh weekly life just to see how it's been over these past couple of weeks. Um but yeah, I I forgot to mention going back to the bowl practices. He opened up by saying those first two weeks or first week and a half, whatever it was, were developmental practices where it's mostly the younger guys. Whereas now they're gonna start focusing on Miami right now, uh starting this upcoming week, which I, I just kind of found it a little bit intriguing. I know it's meant for the younger guys to build up and all, but like Hey, I still want to win this bowl game too. Yeah. There was some transfer portal stuff also asked, but I, I want to hit on everything else. What were some other things that, that were talked about in the presser that you uh, took away that we thought were interesting? Um, I don't even remember the questions to be honest with you. And I was just there like a half hour ago. <laughs> and you just typed uh, it up. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I just typed it up too. Hold on. I gotta, I gotta pop this open real quick. Um, he, he just kind of talked. I don't want to talk on the transfer portal stuff. Cause that was the, the main questions for the most mm-hmm. part, but, uh, I guess people just kind of were asking him weird, like he actually opened up by saying how um, it's going over to Driscoll bridge, like going down to the Jersey shore. And that's how, you know, like you're on the journey there. And that's how he built compared to season two. And he admitted he's not a Kate May guy because that would be the ending. But in reality, <laughs> he's a point pleasant guy. And I was like, I, I, I get it. But is he really though? Because I, I spot him at Leggett's a couple times and that's not point pleasant buddy. Um, <laughs> but regardless, um, yeah, there, there really wasn't like anything super significant, I feel like. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe correct me if I am, but I didn't think anything else was significant other than the, the quarterback talk. All right, so let's get into the portal. Obviously, we have Ethan Kalik Menis taking a visit this weekend with his brother. Mm-hmm. I think Brian Fonseca asked him directly. Yeah. You know, there's been reporting that a transfer portal uh, quarterback is visiting this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, have you talked to Gavin about this and how, how does this affect the quarterback room moving forward? Greg mm-hmm. gave the answer we thought he would, which was, you know, I can't talk about specific players, uh, but, you know, we're evaluating every position on the roster, blah, blah, blah. And then I think Gav- he asked specifically, like, have you talked to Gavin about this and mm-hmm. ha- how have you handled that situation? And he said, I'm going to keep that between him and I. I you know, trust yeah. is so important for interesting for the, for the program. Um, but yeah, I, th- I thought that was also pretty interesting. Um, I can't imagine he's happy about it. Like, Oh, he's probably pissed. Yeah. <laughs> like you're bringing in transfer to visit. Mm-hmm. And then most likely, like we're, we're not playing dumb here. We're not playing Corey. He's going to commit. Like there's not yep. many programs that would take that duo. And it's Kirk's recruit from Minnesota. Yep. Lost his job. At Min- or, I don't know what the hell happened in Minnesota. That shit, that place is a shit show under Fleck. It seems like. 
Yeah, I mean, he no. had a much better freshman year, even though it was only five starts than he did sophomore year, and he wasn't he wasn't great in terms of the accuracy department. But if you look at his deep ball numbers, they are very impressive. He did push the ball. He, and that's kind of the, the balance you need to take, whereas if you're super conservative and you never put the ball in harm's way, you're not mm -hmm. really going to ever have any big plays unless you have, you know, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, yeah. George Kittle, and CMC out there as your, your skill position yak. players. Yeah. <laughs> and everything's yak. Rutgers obviously doesn't have that kind of talent. And then, you know, if you put the ball, if you, you know, go for it occasionally mm -hmm. and you hit it, those are where, you know, winning plays are made in terms of, you know, deep balls. And we had a lot of big runs this year, both from Kyle Manungai and some from Gavin Wimsett, but it's much harder to consistently have big plays on the ground than it is through the air. And the additional factor of there's so many penalties now that are geared towards the passing game. And there's been so Check many times up. where Rutgers has had ticky tack, uh, either defensive holding or, mm -hmm. you know, illegal contact pass interference, where you get that when you make those attempts downfield. And if you're yeah. not making those attempts downfield, you're not putting yourself in position to get you know, big plays by catching it, big plays by penalties. Mm -hmm. So that being said is he has a, he's, you know, 50% adjusted completion percentage on deep balls this year, which is an improvement from 35% last year. I think a guy like him would totally transform the offense because I don't think his arm is any stronger or, or uh, they're about equal him and Gavin, but I think he uh, just pushes the ball more down the field. Whereas Gavin just, you know, throws fastballs to, to guys all over the field. Yeah, um, that's not ignore the fact that he had a four, almost a fourteen percent drop rate from his receiver core. <laughs> like, yeah, that's he had insane. the second highest drop rate as well. Um, I mean, there are certain things that, and I wrote this all up on the site. So if you want to get a whole breakdown of, you know, statistically speaking, Gavin's performance and production versus Ethan's performance and production, actually uh, transform that into an article the other day. I haven't posted it yet, but I got it ready to go. Also, awesome. gonna wait for Ethan um, to commit. You know. Yeah, so like I said, uh, Ethan has uh, a higher turnover-worthy play percentage. Mm -hmm. um, he takes more sacks. He has a higher pressure percentage uh, that is dedicated to the quarterback, which means he either um, moved into the pocket into pressure or he didn't see uh, you know, an edge rusher or something like that. So Gavin has better pocket presence, but pocket presence is kind of like, I, I, I compared it to like, a batter who can identify pitches really well. So say I'm up a plate and I know each pitch, I could call it out fastball, curveball, slider. That doesn't mean I can hit it. I can just say what it is. Now, if, if I can't hit the pitch, it's kind of pointless to know what the pitch is. And so Gavin's really good at identifying pressure, but if you don't have a completion or you don't scramble, you're not really doing much with the identification of pressure and avoiding it. Um, I also have to question the turnover worthy plays thing for the sole fact that Gavin's balls are not even in like the vicinity of the DB. It's over yeah, both of them. That that's fair. If you throw the ball ten yards away or you know I throw ten yards out of bounds, you, it's hard to have a turnover worthy play. You're you're hundred yeah. percent right. So, um. So anyway, so we know of Ethan and Dino Kaliak Manis taking visits <clears throat> this weekend. Yeah. The big news is the names that we are hearing are coming. Ooh. So. Ooh. I, I, I I'll get to that, but you were hearing some good news around a portal guy who visited last weekend. Well, two days ago. Two three days, days ago. ago. Two days ago. Three days so ago. This past Whatever weekend. Tuesday was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Anthony Johnson, who is a defensive tackle from Youngstown State, yep. uh, he visited Rutgers. Sounded like he had a great time. Um, you were hearing good things regarding a possible commitment to Rutgers, and then. The big boys the showed big up. Big boys started showing up. So we got an offer from Texas A&M and Arkansas this afternoon. Uh, so just talk us through Anthony Johnson, what you're hearing and what you're hearing now. Yeah, so Anthony Johnson came on a midweek visit. I think it was either Monday or Tuesday. I forget exactly what day. Um, but he's a uh, Jeanette, Pennsylvania, which is a.k.a. Pittsburgh area um, native. But he played his senior year in Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Um but yeah, regardless, he came to campus, enjoyed his visit. It seems like it sounds like everything was going pretty well. Uh, that didn't sound really like he was too much of an NIL guy, um, so that would have definitely helped, and and he would have easily started for Rutgers because they need another defensive tackle um, to replace Aiton, replace Ahana too. Like you, you have bodies that are just leaving now, significant players too. Uh, and it sounded like it went really well, but then Texas A&M offered this morning and now Arkansas just offered. And it seems like a lot of other schools are just starting to see his tape and starting to be like, oh shit, this kid's in the portal, like throw him an offer. 
Um, so we'll see what happens. It did sound like things were trending towards a commitment. I don't know if that's still the case anymore or not. We're kind of in like wait and see mode to see if he makes any other visit this weekend. If he doesn't, that dead period goes into effect on Monday and, and that's yep. it. Like you're probably going to either commit or you're going to wait all the way till like what, January 5th, 4th, whatever it is. So I think as long as he doesn't take another visit, Rutgers is in a good spot. If he takes another visit, that's where things start to get eh, probably not so, uh, not so good for the Scarlet Knights. So the crystal ball is cloudy on him right yes. now. All right. So that's just a name to monitor. Um, again, like Richie said, if he doesn't take any more visits, I would expect him to end mm -hmm. up as a Scarlet Knight. Um, but speaking of guys who have taken visits uh, and we might think end Ooh. up as Scarlet Knights, we've talked about where are the skill position players? Is, you know, no. we're losing. Well, we're, sort of, sort of. We're, we're losing Jake, Jaquay Jackson next year. We're losing Isaiah Washington next year. You know, mm -hmm. Ian Strong got some good time this year. We have a guy in Corey Duff coming in the off season. Kristen Dremel announced he's coming back, but we could still Huge. use a wide receiver one type player who's who has experience. And one of the guys I identified early on, this is a guy I identified even last year, who was a potential. You know, I, every year I have a thread where I identify guys I think Rutgers should look at if they do enter the portal. Last year was a, he was a guy I looked at. He never ended up in the portal, but this year he did. His name's Dimir Miller. He's a receiver out of Monmouth. He's from Coatesville, Pennsylvania. He's got one year of eligibility left. Coatesville, Pennsylvania should sound familiar to a lot of you guys because he went to the same high school as Aaron Jones and Avery, or sorry, Avery, Avery Young and Aaron Young. Uh, Aaron Young was in the same class as him. Uh, sounds like they're close. They played football together. They were on Coatesville's uh, state record setting four by 100 team. Um, this is a guy who led Monmouth in receiving last year. I think he had around 890 receiving yards last year. This season, though, dude went supernova. He led Crazy. the FCS in receiving yards. He had 90 catches for like 1,300 yards and nine touchdowns. He had the single game record on the season for receiving yards. He had 333 yards against uh, New Hampshire. New Hampshire is a damn good FCS team, too. So that's not – it's not like oh, he's Rutgers, playing – Rutgers and, fans know. <laughs> Rutgers fans should know. It's not like they were playing a D3 school and he just lit him up. This is a legit performance by him. Uh, he's got legit track speed. He's six foot tall. I think he's listed at 180 pounds. Um, he's coming on a visit this weekend. Rutgers has already offered him. He visited Huge. Texas Tech last weekend, walked away, didn't commit. But we're hearing really good things about him. Rich, take it away. I gave you the, the floor. I gave you everybody that the background. Was... <laughs> Pretty much it. That was uh, that was great. Uh, I don't need to really even say anything else on the kid, but uh, in terms of his recruitment, uh, you said it. He visited Texas Tech last weekend, um, but they got a commitment from Caleb Douglas, who's a uh, Florida transfer, I believe. Um, and on top of that, it sounded like he didn't really expect or see what he expected to see on the visit. A.K. he went there and he was like, holy shit, this is actually Texas. This is weird. I'm not playing here. Um, I'm a Jersey guy through and through. I'm going back to Jersey and jokingly, but uh, – yeah, in reality, he's going to visit Rutgers this weekend. It sounds like the Scarlet Knights have the inside track. Um, Memphis is making a push there. And um, I don't know if Memphis plays dirty or not, but I'm, I'm assuming they're probably selling him on Eddie Lewis and being like, hey, look, look what we did with him. Look what Rutgers did with him. Different regime, obviously, and all that. But um, they are trying to push Rutgers out of that spot for this weekend. But it sounds like he's going to be on, on the banks starting tomorrow. And as soon as he gets to campus um, – it, it sounds like things could trend relatively quickly, and we know how that's kind of how it works in the portal uh, nowadays. But this is a uh, this is big for Rutgers, and I want to go back to what something Greg said um, in his press conference. He said something I, I don't have the exact wording because I can't find the article again, but it was something along the lines of like players want to play with other good players, basically. And mm -hmm. that was when he was asked about the quarterback. They follow thing. good players. They follow, follow other good players. players. Yep. And I'm not saying. Like this kid saw Ethan and was like, I'm going to go play with him. But potentially they're, they're using Ethan as a recruiting tool already. You could kind of say like, hey, look at this kid we have visiting this weekend. He's a former high early ranked kid, started from Minnesota. And now he's going to start for us because we need, well, we need help. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's a portal selling thing. And you just sell guys like that. And now all of a sudden you could have arguably the best FCS receiver 
I don't go as far as saying ever because he has the no. FCS record for single season. Maybe well, not ever, but there was just this. Think. It was this this season he had the most receiving yeah. yards in 2023. That's not an FCS record. I, I someone said on there's a graphic from Mammoth that says it's a FCS record for single season yards. I'm just saying. Um, I'm not. I don't know if FCS is just trash or not, but like, <laughs> I don't think so. I know. I know that Randy Moss when he played at uh, what's it called? When he played at Marshall had a crazier when they were fcs oh uh, yeah, yeah um i gotta find that again but someone it said it somewhere um yeah miller holds the fcs record for yards in a single season and yards per game in a single season regardless i mean insane stats 90 receptions for t- almost 1300 yards and nine touchdowns i think any Rutgers fan would kill for that um easily yeah but uh mm-hmm. no very very big and i think that this could completely turn around the offense this isn't a guy coming up from D3. Although I did think Shaquay Jackson had some hot, solid potential. This is a guy that's proved it at the FCS level, which is not too far off. I know it's it's not the Big Ten, obviously, but it's not too far off from the FBS level. It's still D1. Jersey guy makes sense. And, and you get a, potentially a new quarterback to go with him, too. So this could be a totally different offense next year because you're still returning dudes, too, like you mentioned. Yeah, a few more details about the time here that I forgot. He is the second-ranked... Uh, wide receiver, according to PFF, in terms of PFF mm-hmm. grades, he had a 92.3 grade on the season, which is Great. crazy. Um, and he was also basically a unanimous first team All American. Every uh, FCS All American team I was able to find, he was on it. Mm-hmm. From yeah. AP to PFF to Sporting News, he was first team All American. So this is a stud, and he would be the wide receiver one for Rutgers next year if we land him, which sounds like it's trending in the right direction as of now. Yes, very good so far. Uh, uh, one more name, right? Technically, or soon, maybe. Not yeah, confirmed, so, confirmed, but there's a rumor. Uh, yeah, so tell us about who else is supposed to be visiting this weekend from the portal. So Kevin Wigginton, New Jersey guy. Some of you might remember him as that guy that badmouthed Rutgers when he committed to Michigan State. Mm-hmm. Um, different Rutgers, obviously. I uh, started a couple games, I think six or seven last year for Michigan State at guard. Uh, it's, it sounds like he might be making it to campus this weekend, uh, Hun school guys. So it's not too shocking because they've built a hell of a relationship with that school. Um, it doesn't always work out with them, obviously, because they didn't land miles O'Neill or Marco lanes and two quarterbacks that went to Iowa. And, uh, I think Mark or miles O'Neill's connect committed to A&M still got to double check that it doesn't matter, but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, this, this could end up being a commitment too, and it could be a very big weekend for Rutgers considering the. The dead period, like I said, starts Monday. So you got to get these guys on campus and they, they want to commit too. They want to be on their at their school in January as soon as they can and get ready for spring ball and get and get used to the team. Go with this guy, go work out with this guy and work out with Jay Butler and all that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this, this could be a potentially very big weekend. And I don't know how to feel about Wigginton for the sole fact that he kind of shit talked Rutgers at one point and he wasn't the greatest player in the world last year. He had his moments. But um, it, it is a Big Ten caliber guard, and you, you need to replace uh, Dunlap on that one side. But I think Felter has that other side locked up completely now. Yeah, no, it's uh, Wigginson. I think he had a grade in the high 60s on PFF. <clears throat> uh, he didn't start every game this season, but he was pretty good for Michigan State. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I trust uh, I trust Pat Flaherty. But after the job he did this year, turning okay. what was basically the same group from last year into – from arguably the worst offensive line in the big 10 to mm-hmm. average is a huge, huge deal. Um, yeah. when you're going against okay. as many ranked teams as Rutgers went against this year, as many good defenses they went against this year, the offensive line was certainly holding their own in terms of, uh, allowing offensive production. So if he, if he looks at Kevin Wigginson's tape and he sees him in person and he says, I can, you know, this is a starting guard, then let's take him. I'm all for it. Um, we're also hearing there could be some other names on campus this weekend. It sounds like they're trying to get a lot of portal, all, as many portal guys as they're interested in to be on campus this weekend. So we'll have a, a more fleshed out list as those names uh, get uh, confirmed and finalized. Um, but we don't want to tomorrow morning, I think. Yeah. We don't want to put any more names out there with confirming them. So just uh, yeah. want to keep that in the back of your guys' heads as well. And I don't think it's one and done at, offensive line either i know someone actually brought it up to me and they're like hey like actually it's in one of our threads on the board 
They're like, hey, why are they uh, recruiting so many guards and not so many tackles? I was like, it's it's legit. Like the names we have, it's four and four at each. So they definitely want to tackle too. Mm-hmm. Um, and we knew they wanted to tackle last off season. It's not they don't trust Tyler Needham, but they probably don't trust Tyler Needham that much. They they want to get as good as possible via the portal this off season, especially because next year could be a really good year based on the easier schedule than the the previous one was rough, mm-hmm. but uh. Easier schedule, and and you return a lot of guys. You're returning the oh, yeah. Big Ten's leading rusher. You could potentially have the FCS's leading receiver. Partner that with a new quarterback, um, a new tight end eventually. Um, that's that's one of their main goals too, is to get a tight end via the portal because they don't really have a tight end one right now. Yep. Um, same offensive line, three three offensive linemen. Go add a Wigginton, someone else, and you rebolster that room. The defense is basically entirely back, minus Max Melton. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, you, you have a chance to be really damn good next year. So you need to increase this offensive talent room in, in just about every room, I should say, other than maybe running back. Yeah, and uh, I know you've mentioned it, but keep an eye out for Jalen Travis, the guy from Princeton. Yes. I think he's probably their top tackle target. I know that mm-hmm. uh, he's finishing up schoolwork. So that's, yeah. you know, obviously he's at a 90, he takes that stuff seriously. So it wouldn't surprise me if uh, – Rutgers ended up having him on campus at some point. Obviously, it might not be this weekend, but he's a name to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. He has a ton of connections to Rutgers. Um, I don't, have I said it on the pod before? Yep. I don't think yeah, I you did. did. Yep. I have? Okay. Yep. Then, yeah, you guys already know if you're listening again. But uh, R. Rich basically recruited him. Connections to one of the strength coaches. And, uh, I mean, Bob Cerace's son is going to Rutgers, too. We could talk about that one. <laughs> um, so that definitely helps. Um, I think they – yeah, no, that's that's. I feel like I'm missing one, but it, oh, Kirk offered him out of high school. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. Only Power Five offer, so everyone knows him. I'd keep a close eye on him. It wouldn't shock me if he showed up this weekend. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, I think that's pretty much it in terms. Of maybe a tight end too. Wait, I don't think I mentioned yet. Yeah, I, I, mean, I know we're targeting tight ends, but, but there's a uh, yeah. Justin Jolly, the guy that we've been or Jolie. I don't know how you pronounce it. It's uh, a kick in the balls, regardless. <laughs> Yeah, Rutgers didn't pursue him in the portal, it seems, and he just committed to North Carolina State this afternoon. Uh, Jolie, I think his last name is Jolie, so we're going to roll with that. Um, Works for me. He was uh, he went to high school at Iona Prep. He was the leading receiver for Johnny Shepard, uh, Johnny's junior year. Then he went to UConn as a freshman All-American. This year, uh, UConn was terrible, and he did not want to have anything more to do with that program. So uh, Literally came out and said it. <laughs> And man, NC State has made some moves this offseason. They got Grayson McCall from Coastal Carolina, one of the top portal quarterbacks. They got got to talk about Craig's comment on that one. Jesus, <laughs> uh, I, I didn't see it. I, I don't. Uh, you didn't care. see it in the group yeah. chat. Yeah, uh, you know how the guy is like, I pissed teal. Oh, that's right. Craig's yes, like, yes, yes. Craig's like, I wonder if he pisses red now, and it's like, geez, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he does, I hope he goes to see a doctor immediately. <laughs> yeah, um, you're not kidding. Oh. So the, there is one more portal name that entered recently that Rutgers recruited out of high school, um, had some success, and is now uh, looking for a new home. That's Tulane tight end uh, Alex Bowman or Bauman. Oh, uh, yes, Redman is, Catholic. Yep. Is is Rutgers pursuing him or is TBD at this at this point? It sounds like there's like a little interest. Um, there's there's a couple other guys I keep naming that have interest in, but they haven't offered him specifically yet. So I, I try not to talk too much about him just because it doesn't seem like they're really kicking the tires too much. But um, I think he definitely shows some interest. I, I don't know how good of a blocker he was at Tulane. Um, I know he was more of a receiver guy out of high school. I think he put up like two or 300 yards last year uh, with the, the green wave. Um, he had the game-winning touchdown in the you, bowl, the USC, bowl right? against USC, yep. Yeah, that was big. And then, you know who kicked that extra point? Yeah. Valentino the, Ambrosio. The, the, yeah, the origin. Of, the, the origin, but Paisano. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he made sure that uh, – I think they played high school football together, right, him and Tommy? Yeah, yeah I so believe he, so. Yeah, I think he went to Bosco. But uh, he's, he put up something funny this weekend. It was like, a, mm-hmm. you know, from the person who did it first and he had the uh, – yeah. The something thing. hilarious oh yeah. god imagine tommy at rockers uh, my dream you know rich he might be having success in the nfl but i don't think he's good he, enough to he, play in the big 10 you're right acc is <laughs> a totally different level oh i mean he did play in the big 10 uh yeah he did and he had success that's wild, uh, that's yeah, wild. it's crazy how that works right um, yeah oh uh, real quick i wanted to go back to um i know you had that whole potential like transfer portal targets article mm-hmm. how you hit like I, I gotta 
pat you on the back a little bit. You hit like on 85, 90% of them entering the portal. I mean, that's just the way things go. These guys, especially if they're junior, like for, for one, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of Ivy League guys there. So they can't, True. if they do red shirt, they can't access that additional year of eligibility because they don't mm-hmm. have red shirts in the Ivies. Uh, the Ivies True. also didn't play in 2020. And so uh, they, a lot of them have an extra year of eligibility anyway. So mm-hmm. that was kind of easy between like Thor Griffin, who's now at Louisville, uh, oh, Joey Slackman. They did pretty well in the portal too. Dude, they're cleaning up. Um, yeah. Joey Slackman, who has not, uh, he's not picked a destination yet, but he can basically go anywhere he wants. Uh, 30 it, something. It's just easy to kind of point and shoot with that kind of stuff because if a guy is a top 10 PFF grade at his position and he's, mm-hmm. you know, a senior at an Ivy with an extra year of eligibility, you can kind of guess where he's going to, what he's going to do. Uh, it's probably yeah. going to no. make some NIL money. Um, and I do want to talk about impressive. philosophically um, why so many guys are returning to college versus entering the NFL and why we've seen such a paradigm change. <laughs> Yeah, so if you think about it, the only way these guys could previously make money playing football was going to the NFL. And so they were all, as soon as they could, as soon as they felt their stock was highest or, you know, was at a certain level, they would enter the NFL. Um, And a lot of these guys would enter the NFL having grades of a late round pick or an undrafted guy because they're like, okay, I'll just, you know, be undrafted. I'll stick with the team. This is my shot. Now you got a guy like Kyle Manungai who probably got an evaluation and had something like that because he's not the biggest guy in the world. He's not the fastest guy in the world, but he's a guy who does all the dirty work and does all the little things that you want to see out of a running back, right? He probably got a late round grade or an undrafted grade. And when you're in, a, when you're a late round pick or an undrafted guy, you're basically, your contract is, has basically no guarantees. You have a signing bonus and whatever your signing bonus is, is the extent of your grant, your guarantees. So if you're looking at that, you got to roll the dice and hope that you get drafted or hope you, you know, you get X amount of dollars in a signing bonus, or you can sign an NIL deal, stay another year in college, have these opportunities, like the big 10 leading rusher in New York city, he's going to have NIL opportunities that few Rutgers guys have probably had since NIL has been a thing in terms of like on the gridiron. So oh, I, I doubt. I truly think that he is making a good financial decision. Even though I said the opposite last time, the more I've thought about it, the more I've kind of listened to other the people. Flopper. I, I think, you know, I, <laughs> I don't, I'm I don't, just kidding. I'm just fucking with you. but I think there's like a general aversion to changing your mind on things when new information is presented to you. That's just called learning. Like if you're not constantly reevaluating what you think and trying to see if you're right on certain things or wrong, like I was, I think he's making a good financial decision. Plus he might not want to leave. He might, he might really love college. So, so expectations could change. Expectations like mid, could change mid season, mid season with new data and information <laughs> presented to you. Um, but that's, I think why you're seeing all these guys come back because it's like the bird in the hand versus two in the bush. Like if I know I can get X amount of dollars through an NIL deal and play another year of college football, the NFL will be there, but it might be the same amount of money they were potentially looking at as, you know, an undrafted free agent, the signing bonus of X amount of dollars. Like that's less than what I'd be getting at Rutgers. Might as well stay another year. See if I can elevate my stock and become a guy that's, you know, bumped up a round or two in my evaluation. So that, I just wanted to put that out there. Cause a lot of guys came back for Rutgers and it's, this is something that five years ago would never have happened. So. Yeah, no, it's, it's huge. Man. And it, they're not done yet. Technically. Because I know um, we're still waiting on two decisions or three, mm-hmm. if you count um, Igmanosin too. It sounds like Igmanosin isn't just going to put anything out. It sounds like he's returning. Um, Longer beam. I heard that he doesn't. He's not a big like social media like this and that. Uh, he did quote tweet Greg's contract extension yesterday and said my man or something like that. So mm-hmm. you guys can calm your nerves about the Fran Brown stuff because Fran recruited him here. Yada yada yada. Uh, so I think he returns. And then Flip Dixon is a true 50-50 right now. I think he's the only one we're really waiting on. He has NFL potential. He has a legitimate draft stock now. If you asked me this before the season, he had some maybe. Now he's got a lot more. And uh, based on Greg's ability to put guys in the NFL over the past couple of years, like we always use Pacheco as an example for Manangai. We could use Trey Avery, Christian Braswell for, um, for Flip Dixon. I know obviously not a corner, but – 
still a defensive back and they, they know how to, they know how to <laughs> produce defensive backs and develop them too. So um, I definitely keep an eye out. I really don't know which way that one's going to go. Yeah. I really hope he comes back because at times he looked like the best player on our defense this year. So oh, yeah, Flip kidding. Dixon would uh, be a huge addition to an already formidable defense. Um, could we have one of the best two or three defenses in the big 10 next year? Cause we're not done. We're still potentially yeah. bringing some guys uh, in from the portal too. So I think it depends on the interior pass rush. Yes. Because if you get a guy like Anthony Johnson, I think he's going to help a ton. I know he's not built like Isaiah Aiton, but he's produced more at a different level. So, I mean, like if you put Aiton at Youngstown state, is he doing what he does? I don't know. Cause like he, Anthony Johnson had two sacks in three games against uh power five opponents. So it's like, it's not unheard of. Yeah. Or the unlikely circumstance where Joey Slackman shows you, you know, some I mean, interest. Like, yeah, of course. Some, like, dude, somebody like him, him plug in the him, middle. Give him a bag. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> just give it to him. Yeah. No, I, man, uh, I'm excited for next year's team. Uh, regardless of what else happens. We have so many guys coming back that uh, I didn't think would come back. So, And there's no Michigan. There's no Penn State. There's no Ohio State. Yep. Like it, it's, it's fucking beautiful. <laughs> Got UCLA with uh, a lame duck coach and Dante Moore who left USC in mm -hmm. you know, turmoil with no Caleb Williams. Want to fire him? Like <laughs> no Michael Penix in at Washington. Um, Mind you, a good defense, but besides the point. Yeah, no, there's uh, there's a lot of reasons to be uh, bullish on Rutgers next year for sure. I mean, Howard Akron. I'm just going through it real quick. Virginia Tech, you already beat. That's a tough environment though. Mm -hmm. Um. Washington, you said Nebraska might have a freshman quarterback. Yep. Um, Wisconsin, I don't know what the fuck they're doing in the portal. It looks like they're lost. Um, they just landed USC. a quarterback, didn't they? Uh, they did. Oh, Tyler Van Dyke. Yeah, they got Tyler Van Dyke after landing Who two I... quarterbacks last year. They got Tanner Mordecai. Grand Marriage 2.0. Yeah, they got Nick Ewers <laughs> last year as well, who was a high-ranked yeah. guy from Oklahoma. Um, a lot of confidence, right? I mean, <laughs> look at how many programs just do all of their – Order, or do all their quarterback recruiting from the portal. It's Oregon has a new guy every year. You have Wisconsin has a new guy every year through the portal. It's becoming more and more like certain programs are just built to go through the portal exclusively at certain positions now, it seems. Yeah. And um, real quick, I just got to update. Uh, it doesn't look like Jalen Travis from Princeton will be visiting this weekend. He also cannot early enroll. So he's going to be, like I said, very patient with the whole process. So I uh, expect him to take some visits in January, probably. Maybe even later than that. Probably just January, if I had to guess. But yeah, throw that out there. Interesting. But he's the kind of guy that, you know, you wait. The, you wait. And also, the strength training program doesn't really. Uh, isn't as needed as much as a guy like an 18 year old coming in from high school, you know, you can pretty reliably expect mm -hmm. an 18 year old not to be able to contribute. Uh, if he's coming in as a summer entrant, unless he's just a you know, Travis Hunter level freak, but most, most uh, high schoolers aren't ready, um, in general, even if they do enroll early. So I wouldn't be concerned if we do land a guy like Jalen Travis of him not enrolling early, honestly. No, I mean, I'm plus it, I mean, his strength and conditioning coach for three years is currently Rutgers assistant. Strength and conditioning. So I think he's probably okay, but that's just me. Yep. hundred percent. Um, is there anything you wanted to hit on before we head out today? That we didn't One touch? Thing, high, high school recruiting. Um, this is kind of a mixed bag of stuff. Uh, Benjamin Black's the only one we're really keeping a close eye on. I, NC state is pushing still to try to get him on campus this weekend. They're recruiting him as a cornerback. He wants to play wide receiver. He's committed to Rutgers as a wide receiver. Um, sounds like Rutgers has the inside track to keep him. Um, Carter Cadeau, the offensive tackle from Wisconsin, who's a converted tight end, I think, tight end, quarterback, I forget, tight end, I think. Um, he will be on campus this weekend for his official visit. Uh, we mentioned the other transfer portal visitors. There's also going to be a couple underclassmen. I heard the Hunt School sending a couple people. So obviously keep an eye out for Kevin Wingington. Ha, ha, ha. Wink, wink. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Caden Brown uh, has, has an update. Not a good update. Bad update. Um, going to take a visit up to uh, the Big North, a.k.a. Canada, a.k.a. Syracuse. Um, so Beyond he will wall. be. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that, that would be a great graphic. Yeah, just um, like uh, 
you know, a picture of like a bunch of feral the, children running around. Dude, it makes so much mm-hmm. sense. The Night's Watch, the mm-hmm. wall. Like, you know? Oh, you're on to something here. Somebody, uh, uh, they really, uh, Dirty RU, get on that, uh, on that edit. You really want to, that would be great. Mm-hmm. Imagine Greg at the top of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> he's watching over. Oh, dude. Anyway, that would be awesome. But yeah, he's going to visit Syracuse this weekend. And uh, they, there's a certain other Rutgers legacy guy that's supposedly going there too. But that's neither here nor there. Yep, because he's not going to end up here, and he's probably going to end up there. So, yeah, it is what it is. That's a good way to put it. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. No, nothing really else is really going on. The high school is done for the most part. Maybe they'll sneak a guy on campus this weekend because Greg's notably notable for sneaking mm-hmm. random visitors on campus right before signing day, and then signing day hits, and it's like, oh yeah, he was on campus Friday, and it's like, oh, cool. Yeah, but. Anyway, kids, uh, kids like to post everything on social media, so that helps, and I'm pretty good at that. So if, if you see something, say something. Mm-hmm. DM it to me. <laughs> yeah, that's across the board. Uh, Richie yeah. is like a hawk on social media, but is only uh, he's only got two eyes and two two thumbs, so it's tough to see everything. Yeah. I don't sleep either. That doesn't <laughs> help, but don't sleep. Girlfriend yells at me. I'm on the phone at dinner. I'm like, no, you don't understand. This kid's going live right now. Mm-hmm. I'm like. It's nothing. It's literally just him <laughs> hanging out with buddies, but I have to watch. Hold on. He might say something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. So anyway, we went too, too long, too far. That's all good. I thought this, uh, even though we, we talked about <clears throat> Ethan yesterday with, with Tony, which was great. Uh, I want to thank him again. Yeah. Um, there was more was cool awesome. stuff that came through today. So we had to, we had to hop back on here and I thought a lot of the, uh, the stuff that was talked about at the presser and through the extensions were, uh, were really important too. So there might be more pods yeah. this week. There might not. This is kind of a, a dead time for, in the sports calendar. Um, the basketball team is only playing once a week now until the beginning of uh, the new year. They play. Uh, yeah. They play LIU this weekend, I believe. Who is? Uh, wait, is it? I thought it was Stonehill. It might be Stonehill. Yeah, you're right. Uh, regardless, uh, the two teams that sandwich the Mich- Mississippi State game are in the three. The, the low. Fuck, you're right. The low three hundreds. Um, I'm wrong. Wow. All right, I suck. So they play LIU. Uh, LIU is not very good. I think they have one win on the season. Rutgers uh, should just trounce them. Uh, if they don't win by 30 plus, then something probably went wrong and our net will take a hit because of it. Um, yeah, I was going to say, did you see Danny's uh, tweet or quote tweet before? Mm-hmm, about hacking um, the net. It, yeah, yeah, basically, if you beat the shit out of a, a lower opponent, like you're, you're going up significantly. So yeah. they better kick the shit out of them. <laughs> The uh, the caveat is if you're like Northwestern and you lose to a three and nine Chicago State at home, you're going to send your net off a cliff. So yeah, kind of crazy. Net net ranking still it makes no sense to me, but that's besides the point. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see what they uh, what they can do Saturday. I think they should be able to dominate, but again, I don't know. This team confuses the shit out of me. <laughs> I, I do think that Watt Mag is. Uh, you know, the Very super glue that holds all the, the fragments and <laughs> yeah. pieces together. So I am excited to see uh, game two with him on the court again. Uh, yeah. And, oh yeah, Definitely how did we forget about more this? Playing time. Um, oh, yeah. I know what you're going to say. Jeremiah Williams. There was a, uh, a decision made in the NCAA case uh, for multi-year or multi uh, two-time transfer. The two-time transfer rule was ruled uh, mm-hmm. illegal. And so there's a 14-day uh, TRO. Um, that's been in place. And so I think you can now file for an appeal or file to reinstate for reinstatement. Correct. Now there's some loopholes there too, because he doesn't have just that. And he's got another issue he's worried about. Mm-hmm. He did accept a plea deal for the gambling thing. And according to, um, this is Jerry Carino's tweet. <coughs> he, uh, technically needs to figure out what the NCAA is going to do there. It sounds like the best case scenario is he gets a little bit of a suspension this season and it's like, just take it this season, maybe even have a little bit of leeway to play towards the end of the season. And if that's the case, great. It does sound like there still will be some type of suspension because I think he did end up gambling on his own team at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure if that's, that's correct or not, but uh, yeah, it does sound like the NCAA will, will at least do the very minimum, but, it does sound like they, they don't really care about the gambling as, aspect either. So who knows? Maybe they'll be really nice for a change. Have they ever in the history of anything? No. 
So <laughs> particularly towards Rutgers, we have not gotten any breaks in terms of the NCAA. So, but yeah, if you do find a way to get Jeremiah Williams on the court this year, I mean, you've said it. I've heard a lot of people say it. He was the best player on the court in terms of uh, the offseason yeah. work. Uh, he's a great two-way player. You get him on this team uh, as, you know, one of my favorite shows, uh, Rest of Development said, you know, you got a stew going, baby. You get him in there, we might be a much better team than any of us could have expected. This is a guy we were kind of just counting on not having this year. And it's basically yeah. like taking what if you had your best player who wasn't playing i mean you can expect to be better so um i know people are asking too like are you sure they're gonna let him play and i'm like dude if he's allowed to play i can promise you for a fact after talking to people yesterday and today that he's he's playing yeah like he's your starting guard probably yep so super excited uh the prospect of him returning because it, it would be awesome if he was a veteran presence next year when ace mm -hmm. and dylan are here and not kind of like learning, you know, not not playing for the first time in two or three years uh, yeah. on the court next year. So stay tuned He's to that huge. situation because I expect, uh, I, I honestly at this point expect him to play at some point this year based on everything I've heard. I, I think so too. But we will see. Uh, so we went a little bit longer even than we expected uh, 10 minutes ago in the pod, but I think it's worthwhile. Yep, keep going. But. Thanks for every, to everyone who's listened, uh, who's rated, reviewed. If you haven't already, I mean, you've listened to this pod for a while. I'm not sure really what you're looking for, what you're what you're waiting for. Uh, it's Slacking. the smallest thing you can do for us, other than joining TKR. Uh, you've seen a lot of people who have taken you up on those promos too. So yes, I mean, I'll, I'll keep saying it. TKR thirty. Um, sign up now. Free thirty days and. Uh, like we said before, this is the transfer portal season. High school recruiting ends next week with signing day. There's going to be a ton of content. Uh, still got to figure out the signing day stuff. Um, I, I wasn't sure what you want to do there, but we'll, we'll kind of we'll figure something out. We're not going to do like a Scott Hansen type thing because that's pretty cool. But mm -hmm. um, I also don't have the voice of Scott Hansen in the <laughs> background or anything. I might have a just as big a, a viewership maybe. No, probably, probably not. Just <laughs> probably kidding not. completely. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, we'll figure something out for signing day. But uh, definitely stay tuned for that. Yep. Uh I know that there's not much going on in terms of the sports calendar, but in terms of the actual uh, machinations behind the scenes, there's a ton going on. Mm -hmm. So oh, uh, yeah. if you want to have everything, if you want to basically have your finger on the pulse of Rutgers sports, you need to be a part of TKR. Um, so, I mean, broken news how many times this month? I mean, you, we're breaking it now with the Dimir Miller stuff. It's already on the board. There but you go. This is the first time one. anybody's yeah. talking about it. Um, getting bored. Getting bored. Yeah. <laughs> You're just winning too much. Uh, Anyway, I'm not even going to go yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but for me and Richie, this has been another edition of the Network Podcast, signing off.